السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله والشكر لله All praise and thanks belong to Allah Ta'ala Our Lord and Creator and Sustainer and Nourisher The one who is manifesting Jalla Thana'uhu Manifesting himself with his names and attributes in every moment And he has manifested himself Subhanahu wa Ta'ala in this night with his name Al-Jami' The one that gathers so he has gathered all of us and also, subhanahu wa ta'ala, with his name, An-Nur, Allahu Nur al-Samawati wal-Ard, Allah is the, Allah ta'ala is the light, meaning the illuminator of the heavens and earth. So everything good in the heavens, everything good on earth is from his Nur, Jalla Thana'uhu, is from his sublime essence and entity, Jalla Thana'uhu, and of the greatest, uh, and the greatest manifestation of that light is the best of creation, our, our liege lord, our master, our intercessor, our teacher, our most beloved Sayyidina Muhammad Wasallam. So what a blessing, what an honor, what a gift. I mean, I compare this light that we are witnessing and experiencing and breathing in gatherings like this, compare it to the nonsense that's out there. You know, other people, they go to the library trying to find guidance. You know, they pick up a book and they look at it, The Communist Manifesto by Marx and Engels. And they go on, live life based on that as their guidance. Other people will pick up The Critique of Pure Reason by Kant. And they go deep into the limits of the intellect and then they think that they found enlightenment. Other people will find Hume's a treatise of human nature and they think they've discovered the reality of human nature and that's their path in life and he says get rid of all metaphysics and so they get rid of all metaphysics and what are they left with they're left with the life of depression and existential crisis existential anxiety not the normal anxiety of dealing with difficulties but existential anxiety or others will pick up Nietzsche and a book titled the Antichrist and that'll be their path of God. It's what I hold on to today. We have La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Amazing, amazing, and through no merit of our own, it's a pure gift from Allah Taala. Allah Taala could have selected anyone for this light, and we know from the Hadith Sharif, authentic Hadith in the Muslim of Imam Ahmad, that when Allah Taala created all of creation, He placed them in a darkness. And he took from his light, Jalla Thana'uhu, and he cast it in a manner that we can't imagine. Allah Ta'ala transcends any type of physicality or anthropomorphic understanding. But in his own majestic way, in the words of our Prophet Sallallahu he cast from his light, and whomever the light struck on that day, فَقَدِهْدَدَى They shall be guided. But whoever it missed, فَقَدَّلْ They're astray. So this is the manifestation of the divine decree. And this is, uh, you know, of the greatest gifts of our Prophet وسلم, is to recognize and realize that everything is decreed from Allah Ta'ala. Al-Qada al-Qadr. This is a, this is one of the six articles of faith. Al-Qada al-Qadr in the hadith. Qabd al-Lihya, al-Musalsal bi Qabd al-Lihya. That to this day, the mashayikh, when they teach this hadith, they do what every person in the chain did back to the Prophet وسلم, he grabbed his blessed beard while grabbing his blessed beard وسلم, I fully affirm and believe I have full, firm conviction in the divine decree it's good and it's evil it's good and it's bad it's sweet and it's bitter and so all the bitterness all the shak in the world it's not disconnected from the divine decree Allah Ta'ala has his majestic sublime unimaginable wisdom that we cannot comprehend and this is the this is the foundation of our very existence on earth and then we take every effort to take the means to stop the evil to stop the bitterness to end the injustice we take those asbab but we it's grounded in our metaphysics, it's grounded in our knowledge of Allah Ta'ala, it's grounded in, in our knowledge of ma sha Allahu kan wa ma lam yasha lam yakun. Whatever Allah Ta'ala wills shall be, whatever He wills not shall never be. Jalla thana'uhu. 
Our, and our Prophet وسلم, this talk is called Nabi al-Rahmah, the Prophet of Mercy, that the mercy that he brought, uh, of the, of the, at the essence of the mercy are the virtues. At the essence of the prophetic mercy are the virtues, the akhlaq and nubuwa, sallallahu alayhi wa And our mother Aisha, Allah be pleased with her, when she was asked, explain, describe the virtues of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa what was his khuluq like? Because Allah Ta'ala revealed, wa innaka la'ala khuluqin azim. Verily, you are on a vast ethos, you are on a tremendous character. And ala, this word in Arabic, this preposition, it's used. You know, to be on something. You know, I put it on the table. So it's as if he has conquered akhlaq. And the inna is for tawqeed, emphasis. And the lam, la'ala, is for emphasis. So the layers of emphasis that the Prophet ﷺ, so when our mother Aisha, Allah be pleased with her, was asked, she says, that his character was the Qur'an. It's a few words, but it has unending meaning. What does that mean? His character was the Qur'an. Kalam Allah, ghair makhluq. The speech of Allah that's uncreated. What does that even mean? He is created, sallallahu alayhi wa but he is the perfect mirror of the uncreated, infinite speech of Allah Ta'ala. And Allah Ta'ala has revealed as an example, الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّحْرَاءِ وَالْضَرَّاءِ In Surah Al-Ali Imran, describing the people of virtue, الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّحْرَاءِ وَالْضَرَّاءِ Those people that spend in good times and difficult times. وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْبِ And those that suppress their anger. وَالْعَفِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ And those that pardon all people, النَّاسِ Not just their tribe, not just their not just the Muslims, but Afina an nas Wallahu yuhibbul muhsinin. And Allah loves the people of Ihsan. So reflect on these virtues, spending, and arguably the most emphasized uh, nafil action in the Quran is infaq. In Sahih Bukhari, the hadith Qudsi, Anfiq ibn Adam, Unfiq alayk. Spend, O children of Adam, and I shall spend on you. And Allah Ta'ala has repeated this imperative of Anfiqu, Anfiqu, Anfiqu over and over in the Quran. They spend in both good times and difficult times. So the virtue there is generosity. Generosity. And those that suppress their anger, they have self-control. And they pardon people. Those two characteristics reflect the virtue of shuda'a, shaja'a, courage. It takes courage to suppress one's anger. It's an act of bravery. And it takes courage to pardon people. It's an act of bravery. And then the third one, Ihsan. Wallahu yuhibbu al-muhsineen. And Allah loves the people of Ihsan, those that are excellent in their actions and cultivate and create beauty in everything that they do. Now, the servant of the Prophet وسلم, Anas ibn Malik, for 10 years, and his mother, Umm Salaim, was a genius. She was an Arif of Allah, a Gnostic, a knower of Allah Ta'ala, and she was a genius because she requested from the Prophet وسلم, can my young boy Anas be your khadim? And the Prophet agreed, and for 10 years he served the Prophet ﷺ. So, so many narrations we know from the family life, the household of the Prophet ﷺ, from this young, brilliant boy, Sayyidina Anas ibn Malik, anhu, that he was asked in Sahih Muslim, and when he described the character of the Prophet ﷺ, he says, Kana ahsan al nas, wallahu yuhib al muhsineen, wa kana ajwad al nas. So, he was, the, he was the best of people, and he was the most generous of people. He was Ajwad al Nas, the most generous of people. And he was the bravest of people. And we know that he lived a life of material. Like he had spent all of his possessions. Allah Ta'ala said if the mountain, the angel came, that the mountain of Prophet could be turned into gold. So he was not poor, we don't say that, yet he chose to have minimal material possessions. He's the richest because of Inna ghina ghina nafs, he taught us. True wealth is wealth of spirit, wealth of soul. So he was the richest, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yet, in terms of material possessions, he gave it all for the sake of Allah. 
But what we wanted to highlight is an aspect of generosity, kind of ajwad al-nas, generosity not merely of hand, but generosity of soul. So we have to ask ourselves, as we learn about our Prophet as we seek to emulate our Prophet do we have this characteristic, this khuluq, this virtue of generosity of soul? That we're not merely generous with our possessions or money, we're generous with our time, we're generous with our energy, we're generous with our entire being. And Sayyidina Anas ibn Malik, the same blessed young boy who served the Prophet he narrates in beautiful narrations in the hadith of uh, Al Bukhari, كانت الأمات من إماء أهل المدينة that a servant girl amongst the servant girls of the people of Medina, لا تأخذ بيد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم she would take the hand of the Prophet quote unquote صلى الله عليه وسلم فتنطلق به حيث شاءت and she would take him wherever she wants. That's the narration from Anas. Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, in the commentary of Sahih Bukhari, he says, Ta'khudu biyad, it's a figurative language. In other words, the Prophet Sallallahu would give himself with such generosity that it's as if she's just taking him by the hand. So he's following wherever she needs to go. Haythu sha'at, wherever she wants. In other words, Ibn Hajar says, a, a young girl, servant girl, would have needs. Because think of that class in society, the, the ama would be the person in most need of support. She's the, the, that category of people that m are most in need of support. And so he would give himself wherever she, need, wherever she would needed to go, he would give himself to fulfill her needs, to support her, sallallahu alayhi wa And Ibn Hajj says, even if it were outside of Medina, he would stop his entire day and follow wherever she needed to go, to go. So to the outskirts of the city. The busiest man ever, sallallahu alayhi wa The person, his every action is a precedent that would, that would be the bedrock of a civilization till the end of time. There's no one busier than that, sallallahu alayhi wa Look at his generosity of soul, sallallahu alayhi wa In the other hadith that Anas relates, and this is in the Sunan of Abu Dawood, of Abi Dawood and in Sahih Muslim. And the version in Sahih Muslim that he says, Anas says, anhu, that a, a woman, he says that she had a type of disability, a type of intellectual or mental disability. And she comes to the Prophet وسلم, and she says, I have a need. Again, these are, this is a category of people that need the most support in society. And he said, she says, I have a need. He says, Unduri, sallallahu unduri ayya sikaki shikti. Pick any side street that you want so that they can have sufficient time without blocking the walkway. Unduri ayya sikaki shikti hatta aqdiya laki hajatak. So that I can fulfill your need. And Anas said the Prophet went and sat with her, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and she told all the needs that she had, and the Prophet did not get up until he fulfilled all her needs, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's our Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The people most in need in society, he is at the forefront to serve them, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All the angels are serving him, and he's serving the people who are most in need. This is a question for each of us, beginning with myself. How much have I done in my community? Each of us needs to ask ourselves, how much have we done in our community to serve the people most in need? Because these blessed gatherings cannot be merely reminders and rejoice, although it begins there. That's beautiful. But that beauty has to translate. That beauty must translate to concrete khidmah. To, to, to emulate the best of creation. But the hadith also says, So with all that generosity and humility, he's also the bravest of people. And look at the manifestations of his bravery, that on Hunayn, when everyone fled, he was thabit, he was steadfast, and the few that were closest to him, the, the highest companions, and that he says, Ana Nabiyun la Kadib, Ana Ibn Abdul Muttalib. 
I am a prophet, there's no lie, I am the child of Abdul Muttalib. And he was saying this as a battle cry, as he's at the forefront, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they said no one had more resolve on any day of battle than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And on the blessed Hijrah, and the blessed, blessed migration of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abu Bakr relates in the Sahih Hadith, in Sahih Bukhari, Radullah Anhu, that he says, Ya Rasulullah, when they're in the cave, Ya Rasulullah, lo ahadahum, nadara ila qadamayhi. If one of them just looks at his own feet, if one of them just looks at his own feet, la absarana tahta qadamayhi. He would see us beneath his own two feet. And the Prophet, manifesting shaja'a, courage and bravery, says on that, on that, in that moment, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Abu Bakr, Ma dhannuka bithnayn, Allahu thabiduhumma. Oh Abu Bakr, what's your opinion of two people when Allah is their third? And on that same hijrah, when they are heading towards Medina Munawra, the bounty hunters were dispatched to catch them because the Quraysh put a price for the, for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so Sulaqa ibn Malik is after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he wants that reward if he catches the Prophet Sallallahu And as he's approaching, right, Abu Bakr says, Abu Bakr, he says, Ya Rasulullah, he's almost behind us. He's almost there. He's right at our, you know, footsteps. And immediately the Prophet says, La tahsan inna Allah ma'ana. And then as he gets very close, he says, Allahum mikfinahu bima shit. Oh Allah, suffice us against him however you want. And immediately the horse, Surata's horse, fell into the sand. And then Suraqa, he's a disbeliever at this time, he says, Oh Muhammad, I know this is from you. Ask Allah to relieve, relieve it. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then a second time it happens, and a third time. And in the other hadith, Suraqa says, this is from Suraqa, because he later becomes Muslim, so we narrate hadith from him. He says, every time I approached, I could hear qira'at Rasulullah Sallallahu What was the state of the Prophet when his life is on the line? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, reciting Qur'an. And he said, look at the subtlety. He says, Suraqa says, سَمِعْتُ الْقِرَاءَةُ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ وَهُوَ لَا يَلْتَفِتْ And he wasn't even turning around. وَأَبُوْ بَكَرْ يُكْثِرِ الْإِلْتِفَاتِ But Abu Bakr was turning around a lot. And, but we say that that's out of his worship of Allah because it was out of his love and concern for Allah's messengers. It wasn't out of his own well-being. He was concerned for the well-being of the messengers. So that was ibadah. But that was the difference. So Suraqa noted that difference until finally the third time when the horse sank in, he says, Aman, Aman, and then he signed a contract of safety. Later he becomes Muslim. <laughs> so this balance of Jamal and Jalal, the Rahmah of the Prophet, ﷺ, this balance, this perfect calibration and balance, divine calibration of the prophetic manifestation of beauty generosity, humility, serving the weakest in society, and bravery, courage, majesty. And he did not disclose his majesty all the time. He did it when necessary. When facing the enemy at the forefront of the battle, he disclosed his majesty. Allah disclosed it to the enemy. But amongst his companions, when they laughed, he laughed. When they smiled, he smiled. When they talked about a subject, he would engage that subject. He would go with the flow of the company, even though they're all there for him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And in fact, in a beautiful narration in the Sunan of Ibn Majah, and Imam al-Ghazali relates this in the Hiyan al din that once a man came to the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and suddenly a state overcame him. So he starts shaking, he's trembling, because he's thinking, he's realizing, this is Allah's Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I don't know how, if I'm holding it wrong. Let me just turn that one off. Bismillah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. That, uh, so this man is trembling in the presence of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he notices it. What does he say? Hawin alayk. He says, just relax. Calm down. Let's do be Malik. I'm not a king. I'm just the son of a woman that used to eat, that would eat dried meat. And the Arab woman, 
their diet, they would eat dried meat. In other words, I'm just one of you. Just relax. SubhanAllah. The, the subtlety of his akhlaq, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at the rahmah. Look at the rahmah. The whole, you know, the arsh shook for Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad. The arsh shook in the authentic hadith. The arsh of Allah shook at the death of Sa'ad. <laughs> well, what's shaking? What's trembling for Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? But when someone's in a discomfort, uncomfortable state, he relax. My mother ate dried meat like your mom called you did. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. La ilaha illallah. So what a prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What a teacher. What a blessing, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Teaching us all of these akhlaq and the volumes and volumes of books that have been written in the commentaries and all the inheritors of a prophet to convey this teaching to us so that we can try to improve ourselves and draw near to, to our Lord, draw near to Allah Ta'ala. And that of his sublime akhlaq was husnan dan billah. And this is something that we really need in our times, an antidote to a lot of the trauma, to the, to the, you know, the anxiety, the, the sadness that we all are feeling at the tribulations afflicting this ummah, the devastating tribulations afflicting the ummah, that we have so many emotions Husnatan billah, to have a beautiful opinion of Allah Ta'ala. This is also from the prophetic akhlaq, the prophetic virtues. And he taught in the Hadith Qudsi, in Sahih Bukhari, that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, and he paraphrased, so Hadith Qudsi means the Prophet is paraphrasing on behalf of Allah Ta'ala, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that he conveyed that Allah Ta'ala says, Ana inda dhanni abdihi. I am in the opinion of my servant for me. I am in the opinion of my servant for me. And I am with him when he remembers me. And the two go together. So we cultivate the practice of remembrance of Allah as a regular practice because that's the nutrition for our souls. The nutrition for the ruh is dhikrullah. And so we do this as a nutrition. And to the extent that we have consistent remembrance of Allah, we cultivate a good opinion. Cultivating a good opinion of Allah. And when we have a good opinion of Allah, then we find more mercy of Allah Ta'ala in our lives. And one of the great inheritors of our Prophet وسلم, Abu Sulaiman al Darani, he says, Rahimahullah, whoever beautifies their opinion of Allah, Allah has opened the gates of Rahmah to them. Whoever beautifies their opinion of Allah Ta'ala, Allah opens the gates of mercy to that person. And Ibn Mas'ud anhu, and this is related by uh, Ibn Abbad al-Rundi, so I'm relating this from a secondary source, not a primary source. But Ibn Abbad cites Ibn Mas'ud anhu, that he used to teach his students that whenever Allah Ta'ala wants to give a gift to his servant, he first places in the heart a good opinion of him. Whenever Allah Ta'ala wants to give a gift to a servant, He first places in the heart of that servant a good opinion of Him. And then the servant has a good opinion of Allah, and then the gift of Allah Ta'ala follows. So the precursor to Allah's favor is a beautiful opinion of Allah. And this is from tawakkul. This is, this is uh, two sides of the same coin. Beautiful opinion of Allah, the other side of that coin is tawakkul. It's the most golden coin ever to rely on Allah. And we learned, subhanAllah, originally I was preparing the hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As for tonight. And uh, last minute I said, uh, I have, Dr. Ali's gonna be there. Because uh, I was thinking Isaiah 42 and he's done all that research. So last minute I said, let me just change. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, mashallah. We should make Fatiha for Dr. Ali, a gift for this ummah, bismillah. And to all the those that are serving this beautiful religion in every capacity that Allah preserve and protect Ali. So yeah, Isaiah 42. And, but in that hadith, Sammaituka al Mutawakkil, that I named you the Mutawakkil. So the Prophet وسلم, is the Mutawakkil par excellence, the best relier on Allah, the one who relies most beautifully on Allah Ta'ala, and therefore humanity can rely on him. Sammaituka al Mutawakkil. That beautiful hadith. 
وحرزن الأميين he's a refuge for the Gentiles صلى الله عليه وسلم you know amazing hadith so that tawakkul on Allah Ta'ala that this is this is the ground of all the virtues so this is the religious virtue if you will that grounds all of the uh, ethical virtues the moral virtues and the intellectual virtues and so tawakkul is the great expression of tawheed in our tradition this is why Imam al-Ghazali so many of the students, I see some Zaytuna students, they know this quite well, that in the Ihyan al Din, the book on Tawakkul, he calls it Kitab al-Tawheed wa Tawakkul. Imam Ghazali named the book on reliance on Allah, the book of Tawheed and Tawakkul. So the, the, it's, it's the most salient and powerful expression of our monotheism, relying on Allah Ta'ala. Wa ala Allahi faliya tawakkalin mutawakkilun. And on Allah alone, that those who rely, rely on. Sammaituka al-mutawakkil. So the best of those that rely on Allah is the Prophet And we see this in the Hijrah and all these episodes of the beautiful Seerah that uh, this, goes, this goes back to what we began with the Qada and Qadr. So the basis of Tawakkul is recognizing that everything that happens is decreed from Allah Ta'ala. The basis of Tawakkul is recognizing and realizing and perceiving that everything that occurs is from the divine decree of Allah Ta'ala. And again, it does not mean that we uh, are quietists or we sit around and we don't engage in the world. So the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu he would take the Asbab and reading the Sirah, every chapter of the Sirah, we see him taking some, something of the Asbab وسلم, even on the Hijrah, like they went in the cave. He could have just said, I'm here, and the angel will protect me, sallallahu alayhi wa But they took the sabab of hiding in the cave. Then when Abu Bakr was worried, he says, what's your thought of two people, Allah is their third? So it's the two correspond and coincide. They're not, it's not a contradiction. It's a perfect balance and harmony of taking the means while relying on Allah Ta'ala and recognizing His oneness and recognizing the supreme oneness of Allah Ta'ala manifesting in all of these situations that one of the great inheritors of our Prophet وسلم, of the last century and he's a teacher of teachers for all of us Shaykh Abdul Rahman al-Shahuri and we're so blessed to have Ammu, Allah protect Ammu that Ammu took directly from Shaykh Abdul Rahman Ta'ala and we love everyone that loves Sheikh Abdul Rahman. And we kiss the forehead of everyone that took from Sheikh Abdul Rahman. And Imam Zaid took from Sheikh Abdul Rahman. And uh, so what did he, one of the things he used to say, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, that like highlighting this balance, this perfect balance of taking the means while being fully cognizant of the oneness of Allah Ta'ala and relying on him, that he used to say, Rahimahullah, uh, al yad تقيم الحد والقلب مقيم بالبود اليد تقيم الحد The hand must exact justice. It must establish justice on earth. That's, that's the role of the Muslims wherever they are. They must establish justice. We work day and night to establish justice in our homes, in our communities, in society at large, around the globe. This is our task. اليد تقيم الحد وَالْقَلْ مُقِيمْ بِالْوُدْ While, وَاوَ الْحَالْ While the heart is residing in divine love. While the heart is residing in divine love. Whatever injustices we see in the world, it does not take anything away from our relationship with Allah, from our recognizing Allah's oneness, from our recognizing Allah's omnipotence, تَبَارَكَ الَّذِي بِيَدِهِ الْمُلْكِ the fact that the entire cosmos and dominion is in the omnipotent grasp of him, Jalla Thana'uhu, it doesn't take anything away from that. That's the way of the great inheritors of our Prophet And look what he chose. Not just knowledge of Allah, but love of Allah. Because Allah Ta'ala is Al-Wadud, the loving. And according to Imam Al-Ghazali, rahimahullah, the manifestation of the name Al-Wadud in the life of the human being is the example of Yusuf السلام, when he forgave his brothers. And the example of our Prophet السلام, when he forgave his brethren, the Quraysh, at Fatah Makkah. This is the manifestation of the name Al Wadud, the loving. It was out of love that Yusuf forgave his brothers. 
It was out of love that our Prophet forgave the Quraysh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, alayhi wa That's the pinnacle of all virtues in our tradition. The summit is mahabba and wud. And how does that translate in the world? That even people that harm us, we're willing to forgive. We're willing to forgive. So, this is the great way of our masters. And tawakkul, this is our way of navigating. You know, each of us has our own personal struggles, our own personal tribulations, our own personal, uh, the difficulties that we're facing in our lives. Each and every one of us has that. And if someone doesn't have any difficulty, then that itself is a type of difficulty because they have the tremendous responsibility of being a true shakir. So everyone is in a difficult state at some level. And so the way to navigate it is tawakkul. We take the asbab, we, we, we take every means that we can to alleviate the situation, but we rely on Allah. We recognize Allah's oneness. And we rely on Allah. And this is also one of the expressions of this virtue in our tradition is what's called tarkut tadbir. Tarkut tadbir. A tadbir is not just planning. Planning is from the sunnah. It's from taking the asbab. We have to plan. But tadbir is a type of obsessive planning where one is fixated on the results. So obsessed and fixated on the, as, as if one has control of the situation. A type of planning where one has a sense of control of the situation. And so an expression, one of the expressions of this virtue of husna ban billah and tawakkul, relying on Allah, is tarku tadbir, to, to leave off, to abstain from an obsessive type of control, a sense of control. Because we take the sabab and we give it to Allah. We take the sabab, we consign it to Allah. We take the sabab, we make dua to Allah. Before we take the sabab, we pray Salatul Istikhara. While we take the sabab, after we take the means, we place, pray Salatul Hajjah. Everything is cushioned by a prophetic sunnah to cultivate, deepen our relationship with Allah Ta'ala. The Sahaba said the Prophet would teach, taught us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us is Salatul Istikhara like a surah of Quran. And all the great awliya and mashayikh of our tradition, whenever there's any decision they have to make that's of consequence, they pray istikhara. And, and, and in the sunnah of Imam Tirmidhi, if one is on the go, as it were, they don't have time to make salah, two rakahs, and pray istikhara, the full, they can say the short dua, Allahumma khirli wa khtarli. Allahumma khirli wa khtarli. Oh Allah, choose for me, give me what's best. Allahumma khirli wa khtarli. Every time, when you're driving, you're not sure, should I exit? There's traffic. Yeah, seriously. It's a big deal. You get stuck, you suddenly... It's... We take these things seriously. Should I buy this thing? Should I buy it from Amazon or try to find a different, try to find a different seller? So this is the, the way of the... So th what does this cultivate? It cultivates leaving off the end point, a sense of control. So we take the means, but Ya Allah, this is your effort. It's amazing. Look at all this nur from the Prophet And so in that light, one of the inheritors of our Prophet who Shaykh Abdurrahman Shahuri Rahimullah had a specific affiliation and love for is Sahal ibn Abdullah Tustari. Sahal ibn Abdullah Tustari he died 293 after Hijrah, a great inheritor of our Prophet Imam Nawawi quotes him in his introduction to the Kitab al-Athkar. So he's cited by our authorities in our tradition. He's cited in the Hilat al-Awliya of Abu Naim. He's cited in all books of our tradition. And Sheikh Abdul Rahman had a specific love and affiliation for him that he once said, Dharu al-Ikhtiyar wa tadbir He says, just give up on a sense of control and a sense of will, as if you're willing things in the world. We have to make decisions, but a sense of, you know, this is her asserting one's will. ذَرُوا الْإِخْتِيَارُ وَالْتَدْبِيرُ Why? He says, Rahimahullah, فَإِنَّهُمَا يُكَدِّرَانِ عَلَى النَّاسِ عَيْشَهُمْ Because these two things, these two tendencies of the lower ego, the nafs, it gets agitated, it gets worried. So it grabs on to ikhtiyar and tadbir. I need to control this, I have to do this, I have to get this, I'm going to choose this ikhtiyar and tadbir. The lower nafs, it gets agitated. Imam Sahel says, just leave them altogether. Why? 
Because these two, they muddy up and, and, and make, render murky people's life, lives. It just brings more anxiety. It just brings more despair. It just brings more confusion. You kadirani, it's an amazing. Kadir is the opposite of safa. So when we leave these two, then we'll have more safa, more clarity, more limpidity, more lucidity, all this. That's light, that's from illumination. La ilaha illallah. And uh, as a summation of the noble sunnah from this great Imam, we'll just close with this length, lengthy aphorism of Sahil ibn Abdullah. This is also from the Hidyat al Awliya that he said once. When the servant leaves off this life, they, they, are, they are disconnected, uh, detached from the dunya. And the servant, and when they flee from their ego to Allah alone. And the effect of creatures and fellow man has left the heart. He shall not be impressed with anything, nor find repose in anything other than Allah Most High. Allah becomes the one that impresses them. That's what SubhanAllah means. How impressive is Allah? SubhanAllah. Ta'ajjub. And uh, the repose is with Allah alone. So such a person, Allah is their intimate friend. And Allah is the one that gives them their adab, their etiquette and courtesy. And Allah is their guardian and protector. And Allah is their sitting companion and intimate friend. Allah alone will they call in their times of need, private times of need. Ya Allah, help. And Allah alone will they summon. Ya Allah, through the istikhara and salatul haja. And Allah will be the one that they find comfort with. وَإِلَيْهِ يَرْغَبُ And Allah will be the one that they desire. وَإِلَيْهِ يَسْتَرِيهِ And Allah will be the one that they find relaxation with. قَالَ اللَّهُ جَلَّ ذِكْرُهُ And he says, Allah says, and he's paraphrasing from the teachings of the Kitab and Sunnah, طُوبَ لِمَنْ خَلَقْتُهُ فَعَرَفَنِي Glad tidings in paradise await the one that I created and they came to know me. وَدَعَوْتُهُ فَأَجَابَنِي And I called them, invited them, and they responded to me. وَأَمَرْتُهُ فَأَطَعَنِي And I commanded them and they obeyed me. وَرَزَقْتُهُ فَحَمِدَنِي And I give them sustenance and they praised me. وَعَطَيْتُهُ فَشَكَرَنِي And I gave them gifts and they thanked me. وَابْتَلَيْتُهُ فَصَبَرَنِي And I tried them with affliction and they proved patient for me. وَعَفَيْتُهُ And I gave them well-being and health and security. فَذَكَرَنِي وَمَدَحَنِي And they gave their life to Dhikr, remembering Allah Ta'ala, praising Allah Ta'ala, being grateful to Allah Ta'ala. Ta ta this is a summation of who the Prophet was, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We ask Allah Ta'ala to forgive us all for our sins and shortcomings and mistakes. We ask Allah Ta'ala to make us true inheritors of this beautiful, sublime light. We ask Allah Ta'ala to make us, to uh, illuminate our hearts with the beautiful virtues of our Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in our own limited capacities. We ask Allah Ta'ala to give us tawfiq, to become lifelong servants of those most in need. We ask Allah Ta'ala to give us the tawfiq to be lifelong servants of those most in need. We ask Allah Ta'ala to give us tawfiq to be lifelong servants to those most in need. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad al nabi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.